Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, the What Now Movement family, for joining me in this episode of Fitness Friday. I am Beverly Johnson, owner of Genesis Fitness, located here in Huntsville, Alabama. Now, I know you're wondering, where in the world did I come from? And I am here to bring you greetings and talk for a few minutes about a health topic that's always been on my mind. I am an elite trainer, I'm a wellness coach, and I'm a nutrition, a nutrition coach. And part of what I do is that I partner with my clients to build effective strategies to help you achieve your weight loss goals. Because when you think about weight loss, we tend to think of it as temporary. But my goal, hey Sheldon, my goal is to make sure that we create long lasting results that you can embrace a healthy whole lifestyle. Now what I'm going to talk about for a few minutes is called the space in between. Yes, the space in between. And if you have a sheet of paper, I'd like for you on one side to put thought and then on the other side, put the word action. And between those two words, make an arrow. That is the space in between. The space between your thought and manifesting it into action. Because that is where I see many people struggle to jumpstart their wellness plan. The space in between taking it from a thought and it manifesting into action. Because it's easy to say that you just want to lose weight. You say it, it pops up in your mind, and then you move on with your day. And then the next week it pops up, you know, I really need to get on this plan. But then that week you decide to go to your local gym, and then you buy the membership, and then you still don't go. And progressively, week after week, you finally decide to go to the gym. And then you get there, and you feel this a feeling of being overwhelmed because you don't know where to start. You just know that you need to lose weight. And so you go to the gym, you do a few exercises, you walk around, um, on the, you get on the treadmill, you get on the elliptical, and then eventually, you'll do that for about two weeks, and then eventually the effort will subside. Why? Because you did not identify the space in between. Thought life in action. And in that space in between is where we often find our greatest frustration when trying to make a lifestyle change. Because you know you need to eat right. Got that. You know you need to move more. Got that. You know you need to drink more water. Got that. But as a whole, in that space in between, what is your action plan to get there? Because oftentimes we'll have an action plan for our finances. We have action plans for our children's success, our career success. But oddly enough, when it comes down to our success, we often fail to plan for ourselves. And again, as I work with my clients, this is something that we really work to establish. What is your space in between and how is it going to look? Because I know we've read countless studies that during this time, a lot of people have gained the COVID-15. That you gained the 15 to 20 pounds from being at home and becoming sedentary since March. And right now, you're sitting at home wherever you are going, okay, what now? How do I make the transition from here to there? And the first thing we have to do is that you have to create a tangible plan for yourself in your what now. And it does not mean that you just put on a statement that I want to lose weight. You make a declaration on your piece of paper that says, I will lose 10 pounds by November 1st or by December 1st. Because what it does is that you created a contract with yourself that you recognize that where you are now and where you need to be requires an action on your part. And when you are ready to take action, you create the first step of making a solid plan for yourself. Because in that space in between, what's the moment you decide when you're ready for more? Because I can give you tips on top of tips on top of tips. 
But until we actually address the space in between, that space where you decide, I want this for myself. I want this for my family. I want to be present for them. You address the space in between. Because when you put that declaration that says, I am going to lose X amount of pounds by this date, you are setting the catalyst for your change. That's when you begin. And from that, when we partner together, that's when we decide how to give it the framework that you need. Because now when you tell me, I need to lose X amount of pounds. I need to stop smoking. I need to move more. And I want to accomplish this by the day. Then you're ready to attack the COVID-15 because you're giving yourself a purpose. You're giving yourself a plan. You are now establishing your why. And I know we hear it a lot of times saying, what is your why? But when you're ready to make a lifestyle change, this is when you tackle your why. And when then when we address that space in between that you are ready to go, then we can address, let's address your eating habits. Because your eating habits, everybody goes and they go to Walmart, you go to Publix and you see all the new product, produce, you see all the new foods and you will feel overwhelmed because of all the stuff that you see. Because you don't know where to start. But when we address the space in between and say, I want to change my lifestyle habits, I want to change my eating habits, then we can go to the grocery store and say, okay, what you need to do is start substituting different foods. Instead of eating a white potato, eat a sweet potato. Instead of eating, drinking, having soft drinks, start drinking water. Because your changes do not have to be overwhelming. They do not have to be massive. The biggest thing is to start. Start. Start with the first step. Start with the first meal. Start with your first glass of water. And then the changes you are desiring will start taking place. One of the greatest things I see my clients do that you want to go in and you want to take it all by storm within the first week and you buy the nice outfits for the gym. You got the nice little tumblers with your words of affirmation. You go to the gym and you don't know where to go. You feel overwhelmed and subsequently you will quit. Because everything that you're trying to do, you're trying to take it in such huge chunks. So I often encourage my clients, you start slow. You start. And from there, you will see a gradual change starting to happen. So yes, you need to eat less, but you need to discover how to eat the right things. Because starvation is not a diet plan. Starvation, again, starvation is not a diet plan. Because a lot of times what we'll end up doing is that we'll go from one extreme to the other. You'll go from being in one space where you don't know what to eat. So you figure if I just don't eat anything, then that's going to hit the uh, mark. And in essence, you're end up sabotaging your own plan. Now, yes, there's a plan for interval um, intervals, but intermittent fasting, but we'll address that another Friday. But more than anything, I want you to recognize that your change in your eating start gradual. Do not go to the grocery store and buy all those groceries that you have not develop, developed a palate for. Because what will end up happening is that all that food that you have bought that you have never experienced will end up going bad. So I will always tell you that when you're starting in your space in between, our first eating plan first step in the eating plan, we're going to start with substitutions. We're going to possibly start with reducing fried foods because I know within our community, there are certain things that we've passed down as a culture. So we may have to start cutting back on fried foods. We may have to start cutting back on certain, like for me, I don't eat pork. I don't discourage anybody that does. But for me, I had to make a decision not to eat pork because pork makes me sick. So we have to systematically identify the things that we need to take out of your diet that makes you feel better. I hope I said that right. So we take out the things that don't serve you. Start step one. Step two, we get in that habit of moving more. 
Now, I know if you were a prior athlete in your past life or a few years ago, you were an avid gym rat, you, we often have the idea that who we were then, we are now. And so you put in your mind that the things that you did eight years ago, that you can just hit the gym and you'll go right back to running eight miles like you did eight years ago. And the sad reality is that you're setting yourself up for failure and disappointment. So I encourage my clients and I encourage you to, to start where you are now. So if you have to start with walking one mile, start with walking one mile because our progress will look, your progress will look different from mine. Your journey will look different from mine. So don't look over at the person to your left or your right and get frustrated because they have an eight minute mile and you're walking at a 15 minute mile because this is your race. So for your exercise, start where you are. But more than anything, I encourage you to start. What the past was yesterday, that was yesterday. But I want you to walk into the gym or go outside bravely and boldly knowing that you have what it takes to conquer the space in between. And lastly, if you have not started drinking water, please start drinking water. And I mean more than half a bottle a day. On average, one of the greatest tricks that we don't realize is that dehydration often mimics her, uh, hunger. So there are many times where you're not really hungry, you're actually thirsty. So I encourage you to revisit the water drinking thing because when you start drinking water, you'll notice that you may feel a reduction in back aches, a reduction in headaches. Um, you may see a reduction in having leg pains and leg cramps, all because your body has been telling you in every way, shape, and form that it is dehydrated and it's begging you for some water. In many cases, when you start drinking water, you will notice your complexion will start clearing up because you're getting rid of the toxins. So in this space in between, I encourage you to start with an action plan. What is going to be your why? What is going to be your purpose? And then you put a date on it because by putting a date on it, you now hold yourself accountable to that change. And I have learned that's the biggest thing that we fear. We fear accountability to ourselves because on certain levels, we don't want to disappoint ourselves. We don't want to disappoint our accountability buddy. But if you put a date on it, it's something about knowing I have to get up and become accountable because I told Sheldon that I'm going to walk three miles today and I know Sheldon is going to call me and ask me did I walk three miles. But it is in that accountability that you will grow. And yes, Eric, dehydration will mimic hunger. So there are a lot of times when you feel that, that little urge that I just need something to snack on. That is your body begging for water. And even after that, if you've had some water and you're still not quite satisfied, then get a snack. And buy a snack, if you want something sweet, read the serving sizes. That, for example, an Oreo may just be two cookies, not the whole sleeve, y'all. It may just be two cookies, not, not, not the whole sleeve. Yes. So it's understanding that you can still live your best life your best healthy life, and still enjoy moderation. It's about breaking old habits and in having the courage to embrace new habits. A healthy lifestyle is not a death sentence. It's not a, yes, Eric, a whole sleeve is a, yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, we're not doing that. We are not taking the whole sleeve. Sleeves are only good in the wintertime, not in snacks. Sleeves winter, sleeves cookies, no, no, no. And that is another conversation for mindless eating because when we're bored, we just, emotions, bored, stress, we just eat with no thought. But when you're going forward, remember your space in between, create an action plan. And in that action plan, you create items that you're going to do every week. 
you're going to walk a certain amount of miles every day, or you're going to commit yourself to go to the gym every day. You're going to commit yourself to drinking a certain amount of water every day. You're going to exercise every day. And if necessary, create, find an accountability part, a partner. Or as we said in the military, find a battle buddy that's going to have your back. I didn't eat, I don't eat the entire sleeve. I always leave at least one. Well, I don't believe you, Ted. I, I don't, something in my spirit is telling me. I don't, I don't believe you, Ted. Mm -mm. Something's in my spirit is telling me that you are a sleever. In my spirit, I feel that you are a sleever, Ted. Prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. But remember, as always, this journey is about moderation. You'll have good days. You'll have bad days. But just remember, it was a bad day, not a bad month. Yes, I'm judging you. You see this? It's judgment. Judgment, Ted. I'm judging you. <clears throat> oh, don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. I have to finish, y'all. I have to finish. I got to wrap up. And so, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So, if you have a bad day, dust it, shake it off, and get back up again. But more than anything, don't internalize it. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just remember your goal because you said you are going to hit your goal no matter what because we're all human. You can have a bad moment, but you're not a bad person. If you're like Ted and eats the sleeve of cookies, don't eat the other sleeve. Save some for your family. I mean, just come on, Ted. Share. Share with the group. And when you need to, get a battle buddy to help you stay on track. I have, I've been in this business for 10 years, and I have a battle buddy. And I check in with my battle buddy, and we go over my goals. She goes over her goals. And that way, we are accountable, we're accountable to each other. So it's always good to have a battle buddy. Someone that keeps you motivated on your down days, on your good days. Someone that you know is going to love you enough to say, hey, chin up. It was a bad day. So that concludes my time. Now, if you would like to have, learn more about what Genesis Fitness offers, I invite you all to book an appointment with me for a clarity call to discover how we can partner together to help you achieve your goals. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, my name is Beverly Johnson, owner of Genesis Fitness located here in Huntsville, Alabama. And it's only fair that I rep my school today, the illustrious Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University, uh, founded in 1875, where service is sovereignty. Thank you so much. This concludes this week of Fitness Friday, and I will see y'all soon. And Ted, don't eat any more cookies. Got it in there. Ha! Thank y'all.